We're going to auction this thing off. Lot number 25 on the lawn care bench. You give me 25. 25 bidder now. 25. Would you give me 25? Now 30. 30. Dollar bidder now. 30. Would you give me 30? Hey, 35. Dollar bidder. Bids 30. Would you give me 35? Dollar bidder now. 30. It's old. 35 dollar. Put them on buyer number 15. Thank you, sir. That's my icebreaker for the morning. What are some non-negotiables for you in uh, building your business? I would never have my employee do something that I am not willing to do. How do you prosper financially in your business and prosper with your wife and children and have success in both? Put your family first. You're not gonna go on your deathbed and be like, man, I just really wish I would've spent more time at work. It's not gonna happen that way. One piece of practical advice to someone just starting out in the landscaping business in one sentence. Welcome to the Green Industry Podcast with Paul Jamison. This show is all about helping lawn care and landscaping professionals take your business to the next level. Paul is the author of four best-selling books, including Cut That Grass and Make That Cash, and his brand new book, The Lawn Care Advantage, winning strategies for a thriving landscaping business. Available on Audible and narrated by Mr. Producer. Now, here's your host... Paul Jamison. Hey, what? Good morning, everybody. Excellence in broadcasting coming to Louisville, Kentucky again. There you uh, go. Our special guest today from Illinois, Jay Jacobs, Jeremy Jacobs. What's up, Jeremy? Morning, guys. Good to be with you all. And uh, we have our co-host here today from beautiful Fairfield County, Ohio, Caleb Ballman. What's up, everybody? And uh, from... Virginia, Midlothian, Virginia, Naylor Talley There you go. There you go. The suburb of uh, Richmond. Yes. So lots of thank yous to give out to, uh, before we get started today. We're going to talk about premium pricing and how to actually attract good employees and then keep them uh, with, with Jeremy. Uh, before we get started, I want to first say thank you to Naylor. Uh, he pioneered this event years ago. We were upstairs on Friday morning, uh, standing room only, and, and Naylor watching you, what you do for our community uh, I just want to say thank you for uh, continuing to do everything you do for our community. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. Yeah, and you're having a party tonight? Oh, yeah. The rally at the Yum Center tonight. We're going to have a blast. 6 p.m. Yeah, it's com uh, free 99. It's completely free. You guys are invited to join us tonight at 6 p.m. at the KFC Yum Center. It's upstairs. Um, also, we want to say thank you to Kohler Engines. I'm not sure if Craig and Jamie are around. Uh, but thank you to Kohler for sponsoring this event year after year. We appreciate uh, their partnership. And uh, thank you to Evan. Where are you at, Evan? There he is. Uh, Evan in the back. Uh, he has a spirit of excellence. Uh, if you're going to do something, in my opinion, do it well. And uh, Evan, from the good donuts to the good coffee to the, to the room, uh, thank you, Evan. Am I leaving any, any thank yous out? I think you covered it, man. Thank you. Oh, we got two more. <laughs> Thank you to Mr. Producer. He's back in the Appalachian Mountains. Um, he's never come to an event before, but we have some breaking news. He's going to come to the first event in, in our history in January. I don't know how you pulled it off, Naylor, but that check must have been fat. It's just all about building the network. My network is my net worth. So I asked Mr. Producer if he'd come to the LCR Summit and uh, help you teach a master class on podcasting in Atlanta, Georgia. So... Check it out, lcrsummit.com, shameless plug. Thanks, Paul. Hey, you're welcome, Naylor. So um, if you guys ever wanted to meet my producer, he's going to be at an event for the first time ever in January. And last but not least, I want to thank our live studio audience. If, if you guys are listening to this podcast, we have hundreds. I'm not exaggerating. Am I hundreds of people here at 9 a.m.? So we have, I, I want to give some uh, beanies out. Um, who came here from my home state of Ohio? Let's hear it up. Paradise. Uh, who else is from Ohio? Come get your beanie. It's cold, so you need your beanies here. I'm going to put that right there for you, sir. Anyone else from Ohio? Oh, H. There you go. All right. Who else is here? I feel like Oprah. You get a car. You get a car. Two over here. But all right. That's, that's enough on Ohio. Who's here from uh, Kentucky, the home state? All right. You want a beanie? I'm going to run out of beanies here. All right. So yesterday I met somebody from Poland. And Ireland. Do you know where Poland is, Caleb? Yeah. It's by Denmark. They can't hear you. Uh. Is Shane and Norbert here? Shane and Norbert, are you here? They're All right, from so Ireland. Is anybody here from Europe? 
Oh, we got one in the back. Come on up. Yo. Any, any, anybody who uh, is here from uh, outside the country and not Canada, Mike Pletz, come on oh, up. Sorry, Canada. Jeez. <laughs> John, get the Man. microphone. I want to hear where these folks are from. So uh, come on up. Come on up. Don't be shy. Uh, yeah, on. Come on on the stage. This That's is great. That's so awesome. Hey, Jack, where are you going? Oh, yeah, where are you from? Come on on the stage. We have international people here. This is absolutely crazy. Come on up. Join the Green Industry Podcast. Come on, John. Where are you from? I'm from Slovenia. Slovenia, where's that? Uh, at, it, we border Italy and the Balkan, Balkans. Awesome. Is it cold there? Sorry? Is it cold there? Yeah. All right, you get a beanie. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Where are you from? Ireland. I, I met you yesterday. Yeah, Is yeah. it cold in Ireland? It's pretty cold. We're out of beanies. Does anybody have cash? <laughs> uh, we got to give them something. I'm, I only got fives and tens. There you go. I'm sorry. Where are you from? From, from Ireland as well. Oh, this is great. Ted. Thanks very much. Look, I got ones, fives, and tens. If anybody's got a big That's yeah. Norbert and Shane. Hungary. Where? Hungary. Uh, it's Texas. Hungary. Yeah. That's five. Yeah. I'll look out. I got to raise my prices, man. I don't even have a 20 hertz. I don't have anything else to give you guys. Where are you from? New Zealand. New Zealand. Let's go. This is crazy. I met you yesterday. Poland. That is absolutely amazing. Very cool. That's oh, so let's, great. Yeah, let's yeah, get a yeah, picture yeah. here. This is pretty cool. Go ahead. We have an international audience on the Green Industry Podcast. All right. Thank you, guys. Can, 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 can we give them a goodies giveaway bag or something? That's later. All right. Thank you, guys. Once upon a time, we were flinging $100 bills when the Long Care Juggernaut was here. Except so, Canada. Uh, well, thank you guys for coming. I wish I had, I wish I had more to give. Uh, and last but not least, uh, the Equip Expo bought 300 of the books, um, the Lawn Care Advantage. Uh, this is a gift for you guys from Equip. So uh, thank you to Evan and the team for, for getting those books. Feel free to take those. We're going to auction this thing off. Lot number 25 on the Lawn Care Advantage. You give me 25. 25 bidder now. 25. Would you give me 25? Now 30. 30. Not a bidder now. 30. Would you give me 30? Hey, 35. Not a bidder. Bids 30. Would you give me 35? Not a bidder now. 30. Sold. 35 dollars. Put them on buyer number 15. Thank you, sir. There you go. That's my icebreaker for the morning. Mr. Horning, you win. That's your second year in a row. Thank you. All right, that was fun. I, I've never had an international audience uh, on my podcast. Well, or an auctioneer. Yeah, or an auctioneer. Uh, Jeremy, uh, what are some non-negotiables for you in uh, building your business? Yeah, so basically when you start your landscape company, you're always saying yes. Yes, I'll do that. I'll do that. And it probably took me a couple of years to, you know what, say I need some guidelines to tell me what, I, what are some things that are a hard no. Um, so get those established early on, especially like your minimums on mowing and be confident in that. Um, but beyond that, some things that are important, I think, are just how you treat your employees. Because when it comes down to it, if you ain't got guys to do the work, you're, you're not going to make it. And so simple things like being timely with your payroll. It's a non-negotiable. On Monday by 8 a.m. or whenever your pay cycle stops, they need to be paid. Why do you pay them on Monday versus Friday? So basically there's, there's uh, times where we work on Saturdays. And I, I just, in my mind, I think of a, if you look at a calendar, you know, it starts on a Sunday and ends on a Saturday. So that's how our payroll goes. It goes two weeks um, from that first Sunday to that second Saturday. And so... That's how we do it. Monday morning by 8 o'clock, everybody should have that direct deposit heading their way. That's one of them. The other thing is, like, I, I would never have my employee do something that I am not willing to do. That could be a, a physical thing. That could be going up to the door and talking to somebody. I'm never going to put my employee in a situation that I wouldn't do myself. Um, and even in real time. There's times where I'm out, and uh, I can kind of tell maybe they don't, don't want to do the task that I asked them to do. And, you know, I don't, like, um, criticize them or anything, but I'm like, you know what, I'll help you out. L let's do this together. Because I can just tell maybe their morale has kind of dipped a little bit, and it can be a real boost to grab, grab you hop on the mower for the, the next 45 minutes. I'm going to knock out the string trimming. So little things like that. Um, and then personally, I think it's important that we have uh, hard stops in our own, in our own personal life. Um, I'll just give you an example. So, so I'm married. I've got 
five kids, and we're actually expecting number six in February. Congratulations. And um, we've been in business a while. I started in 2009, and probably in the last year, it really hit me. My oldest daughter just turned 15, and it's not that cool to be with mom and dad anymore. It's not that cool to, to do the things she once did when she was a little girl. And you, you have a limited amount of time to be a, a positive influence on them and to see it where she's starting to make her own decisions. So anyway, my point is put your family first. There, there is a time, early stages in business, where you've got to be out there. You, you miss supper. You miss some family things. It's going to happen. But as soon as you can, get those priorities switched around because these are things that you cannot replace with money. Nobody, you're not going to go on your deathbed and be like, man, I just really wish I would have spent more time at work. It's not going to happen that way. So um, th there was something that happened this summer that uh, really brought it home. We, X Mark, in, in growing up, X Mark mowers, we used them as a kid. And about three years ago, they reached out to me to be a partner with them. And it was such a privilege to work with Xmark. Anyway, this spring they invited me to Beatrice, Nebraska for a, a tour. Paul was going to be there. Brian was going to be there. Jason Creel, Keith. And to me, like, these are like big names. And I really, really wanted to go. So I'm like, you know what? Count me in. I'd love to come. I put it on my calendar on my phone. And about three weeks later, me and Kelsey, were, my wife, were talking about our vacation plans for the summer. And we, we got on Airbnb, and we, we started shopping around. And anyway, we planned this trip to North Carolina, booked our places. And it took us like a whole Saturday afternoon. And my wife's really picky about the places we stay at and stuff. It, it's, it's kind of a hassle. But anyway, we had the whole trip planned, booked our places. And that night, I just happened to look on my phone, and it fell right during the time period of that X mark thing. And I'm like, oh, dude, I cannot mix the, miss the X mark thing. I mean, this is my... Passion is, is landscaping and mowing, and it's such, such a privilege to be with Xmark and whatnot. But then, like, I'm thinking, okay, do I put my wife in second? We spent a ton of time, and it's, it's stressful trying to plan all that. And so I didn't know what to do. But I, I just, the next morning, I just felt like I got to put my family first. And I, and I texted uh, the great people over there at Xmark and said, hey, sorry, I double booked. And they totally understood but it, it was a very, it was a tough decision for me. And I think everybody can relate to that. Um, but I don't have any regrets. Xmark is so gracious. But it, it's just little things like that that once in a while come up that you really need to know what, where your priorities are. That's so good. So how do you prosper financially in your business and, and prosper with your wife and children and, and, and have success in both? Yeah. I mean, prospering in business, oh, boy. I feel like uh, Caleb alluded to it earlier. Business is a math equation. Um, if you want to make money, figure out what that is and do the math back backwards to figure out how much you have to make a day to, and save a day or whatever to get to where you're going. It's like one thing for me personally is a few years back, I had a herniated disc in my back and um, went to the doctor and he's like, you know what, Jeremy, you really need to gain some strength in your upper body. You're using your back for everything. And I weighed like 135 pounds, 140, and I could not gain weight. But he told me, he's like, you need to, you need to, gain, you need to gain, gain some upper body strength and put on, some, put on some weight. So I figured out how many calories I need to take in. I figured out an exercise routine, and I worked towards it. And lo and behold, after six months, I put on like 20 pounds. Figure out your problem. Put a number out there, work the math backwards, and follow a program to get there. Absolutely. If you guys have any questions, John uh, is right up there. We'll be happy to, to get some of your questions on the program. Go ahead. We got one here. Quick question. What one thing would you, that you did that you, you, know, you, you say, I really don't want to do this ever again, what would that be? What would you teach all of us? Um... I think we have to be really, really careful with how we criticize our employees. It's so easy to find the things they did wrong throughout the day. If you send a text, it's usually because they missed something or a customer complained about something. But how many times do we actually encourage them? My wife reminds me, you need to be telling how thankful you are all the time, every day. And there's been times where I've been really quick to um, correct 
And, and they're just out doing, and maybe it's, it's one of those little nuances that I notice, but, you know, the other 60% of people won't notice. But I'm, I'm very quick and pick apart or show them the areas that they can improve on. And sometimes I can beat them up, I feel like. And so I think that's one thing that I would really caution everyone in is to give way, way more positive feedback to your employees than negative. They need the negative so that they know which areas to improve in. Be real tactful how you do it so that they, um, you know, know it's coming from your heart that you really appreciate them and it's for their betterment. I was just going to say, I mean, think about it. Uh, positive reinforcement makes you want to do it more. You know, like negative is you're going to not want to do it. But if, if you just keep getting negative, 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 then you're just going to completely like withdrawal and not even know what to do anymore. So the more positive, the more you want to do it. So sometimes you don't even need to give any negative criticism if you just keep spinning everything in a positive way, you know, like, hey, I really liked how you striped, you know, this yard, you know, last week, instead of saying, you know, this was a terrible job that you did this week on this yard. And then they think about how, how they, oh, yeah, what about it did you like? And you kind of maybe go into a little bit. And they focus on how you liked them mowing that yard or striping that yard instead of, like, how bad they did that yard. So I think it's, it's just a, it's all a mind game. It really is. It's all a mental switch. Back to the previous questions on Caleb's, you know, uh, podcast, just like he was saying, we kind of get really caught up as the owners spoiling our clients and then we grow, and then our employees are never going to measure up to us, right? Like, we have that mindset. We have to get out of our own way, out of our own head, so that we can allow the team to grow and perform. And like Caleb said, our 120% is, you know, their 100%. And the customers won't even notice a difference if they aren't spoiled by our 120% all the time. And we have to ease that transition. Paycheck? Yeah, we got another great question from Frank. This has been great, guys. Thanks so much for this. Jeremy, I know you love the uh, box trucks, and uh, we run uh, trucks and trailers, and I'm just wondering uh, maybe a good way to transition to the box trucks. Any advice you'd have uh, how to do that? Yep, so what he's talking about, we run uh, Azuzu single axle straight trucks, and they have the beaver tail, and you can put the mowers on there. You don't have to pull a trailer with that. Um, in my mind, if you are a lawn mowing contractor and that's kind of your bread and butter, we also do uh, lawn treatments and those trucks work awesome for that. It is just a no brainer. A lot of our employees are anywhere from the ages of 17 to 24 years old. Um, and you know, they're gonna, make, they're gonna make the wrong turns. They're gonna get into parking lots where they gotta get out of. They're gonna have to turn around on streets and trailers are just a huge headache. Even we have a couple dump trailers and I've had to rewire each of those already one time and we bought them brand new a few years back. There's just so many risks. Unfortunately, the cost of those trucks have went through the roof in the last three years. Back in 2017, you could get a brand new NPR with a beaver tail set up for like 43,000. Now it's like 73,000. So if you can get into a used one, um, the older diesels, you're going to get a lot of life out of those. The newer diesels I would stay away from, and I would just get the six-liter Chevy gas engine. But, yeah, for us, they are, they are low maintenance. We bought all of, our, all of ours brand new, like, between 2015 and 2018. I'm expected to get about 200,000 miles out of them, which is about 20 years because we put right around 10 to 11,000. And I did the math, and at the cost we bought them at, um, we'll basically be spending, you know, in tires and maintenance only about $3,000 a year to pay for the cost of the truck and to maintain the truck. I mean, that's peanuts. And so I am a, I'm 100% on board with going with the uh, NPR trucks. Thorough answer, Jeremy. Good job. <laughs> Payjack, last, last question that I want to I talk to you about pricing and make sure we're, we're above market uh, rates. And then um, we're going to take a picture, and we've got some more giveaways, and we're going to sing a song. Okay. Well, just just hold off on the cash, okay? I'm getting low on funds here. Uh, I got I, I gave away my tip money for the yeah I, the I luggage just, guys, so I need to. So that's okay. I'll, I'll I'll bill you. But we got a great question from Daniel here. So uh, this question is for you, Paul. So this is your fourth book. Do you have plans for a fifth book, or do any of you up there? Do any of y'all have a plan for a book or any other? I'm, I'm in the for? preliminary stages of a fifth book about about money, like. Ironically, um, and we had a great question earlier. Someone asked about investing and, and things of that nature. So uh, I'm I'm working on that one right now, but it's in the rough draft stage. So 
Uh, book five, you know, will hopefully be out uh, in the next year or two. Last question, and I want to yeah. ask you about pricing. I have a quick question about pricing. So I'm a younger guy. Some people get confused because they don't think that I own the company, but I just speak for behalf of them. So I like charging my premium prices, but how do I show that I own a legit company with employees and overhead, and I'm not just a kid trying to pay my way through school? I mean, it's, there's a lot of social proof. I mean, do you have a website? Do you have an Instagram page? Do you drive a truck? Do you wear uniforms? There's just a few things that you can do real easily to become, come across as a professional business. Um, or, you know, when they Google you, do they find, find you on Google? Yeah, so, so di let's dive deeper into premium pricing. H how do you do premium work onto charging premium, you know, hopefully above the market uh, rate for what's average yeah. in your area. I haven't heard it from Caleb, but I've heard it from other hardscapers that there's no money in mowing. Um, and they're getting out of it and doing hardscaping, and that's where all the money's at. No, I don't think, you've, I don't think I've ever heard it on your podcast, but I hear it all the time from other people. The problem is they just didn't know how to price pr mowing in the first place. Um, there is money there. You just need to go get it and you need to make sure that you are uh, charging accordingly. So for us, I'll just tell you like a, a really simple thing in my area, I'm out of central Illinois, but each man on my crew every day needs to be grossing the company between five and $700, each guy. So if it's a crew of two, they need to do $1,000 worth of mowing every day minimum. So you just sit down, plan your routes, you know how much you're charging for each yard and make sure it adds up to $1,000 if it's a two-man crew. It's, it's not rocket science. If you do that consistently, you're going to make money. Now, as far as like becoming that premium on price, I don't, we are on the high end, but I wouldn't say that we are the most expensive in our area. Um, we capitalize on efficiency and we have an awesome crew. We do not tolerate downtime. Downtime doesn't work for us, but I would say, you know, being consistent that's some things that I think all of you guys probably do. You show up at the property at the same time every day of the week to mow it. If you market yourself and brand yourself like the Azuzu trucks, the stripes, those are some things that as a local community, they see us and that's, they think Jay Jacobs when they see a, a cab over Azuzu truck. When they see a lawn that's dark green stripes, they think of Jay Jacobs. So that branding um, goes a long ways and I think keeping that continuity with all your social media and uh, your website and stuff like that. It just builds value. The last thing I'll say here is, and I know a lot of people look down on this, but if you have time, go to college and learn your plants. Learn your shrubs, learn your trees. When I go out on the job site and the customer walks around and they're like, do you know what kind of bush this is? I'm like, yeah, that's a lilac or that's a viburnum or that's a mohican. They're like, oh man, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. And there are so many of you guys out there that don't have a clue about what uh, a maple versus uh, an oak looks like, or maybe you do and you're guessing, but go out there, spend your winter or get a, a night class or do it yourself online, but learn your plants. There's going to be a lot of value there, not only for yourself, but that you can share with others. Yeah, and to the young man who asked that question, if you show up and you do a really good job, like that, that's all, when someone wants you to come mow their lawn, they just, they want you to show up that you're trustworthy that you do a good job. And if you're doing that, someone who's out working hard, they don't want to worry about their yard, they'll, they'll pay you uh, a fair amount. So I, I would focus on excellence. Uh, do, do your job well and, and charge, you know, find out what the market average, what the big boys in town are charging, the, the you know, legit companies, and uh, char charge a fair market rate, but make sure you're doing an excellent, excellent job. Also, real quick, if you're young out there, remember I said I interviewed someone on the LCR Media Podcast, so check out that episode coming soon. It will answer your questions. But just remember this. He was 13 when he started. He was 15. He hired his first employee to drive the truck for him because he didn't have his license. Now he's 20, making over $4 million a year. He doesn't even go to the dealer to buy trucks anymore because he's tired of the nonsense like, where's your dad? He just buys it all online, avoids the sales team, all that nonsense, goes and picks it up. These are big trucks, big cherry picker trucks. They do tree work and landscaping, full service customers down in Florida. So check out that episode. You'll feel a lot more confident about it. Thanks, Brooke. Uh, rapid fire in one sentence. And Robert, could you please put that QR code up on the uh, screen? Uh, rapid fire. Uh, if you got, how many people are finding value from today's episode? Did that one guy, that one guy over there is sleeping. Look at this. <laughs> over here in the front. 
<laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully Disc- we can do a <laughs> disclaimer. He was sleeping uh, during his podcast, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> we put him to sleep, man. Yeah, definitely. We do have free coffee in the back. But if you guys are finding value of our show, uh, if you could scan that QR code there, get out your phone and, and scan that QR code. Uh, that's the Green Industry Podcast. We do this every single day, uh, Monday through Friday. I, I'm coming up on 1,100 episodes. Um, so we'd love to give you the knowledge, um, some motivation uh, for your business so you can follow the Green Street Podcast. Rapid fire to conclude, uh, one piece of practical advice to someone just starting out in the landscaping business in one sentence. Write your schedule down every day. Decide what you're going to be world class in. Network. That was less than one sentence. That was, that was really good. All right, well, uh, our sponsor for today's event is Kohler. And it happens to be Jamie's birthday from Kohler, uh, which is pretty cool. So we're going to sing her happy birthday in a minute. And I also want to get a group picture, uh, not just with my international friends, but with everyone here. So, Naylor, do you want to uh, coordinate us getting a picture? And Yeah, well, first we have to let, let Jamie come up, do the yeah, raffle, so we can raffle off all the, the Kohler giveaways. Woo! Everyone get out your raffle tickets. Thank you to Kohler. Thank you to Jamie. Can we, can we uh, sing happy birthday as she comes up? Go right ahead. You kick I us off, I suck at singing. You, you start us off. <laughs> happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jamie. Happy birthday to you. I'll take this one. I thank you, I do. I thank you, I do. I thank you, everybody. I thank you, I do. Nice. My mom made us sing that my whole life. If you didn't sing that, you didn't get your gifts. So, all right, guys, thank you so much. Swing by the Kohler booth, say hello. I, Let's all come I up here real birthday, quick for so. a picture, group picture. Yes, and hey, up. here. For the group picture, we can't stay stand on the stage, so we'll break it. So let's stand in front. You're welcome. Can you stay here? Sir? Group picture, everybody come up and stand in front. Elijah, this is your cue to get the camera ready in the back. Why, why we smush it in, I want to tell everyone a joke. I told this to Naylor, and he thought it was funny. <laughs> Does anybody know where bees like to pee? BP? BP. The gas station? BP? Wah, 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 wah. I don't know if they have the gas station BP in Italy. All right, are we good, Elijah? All right, let's all look at the cameraman. One, two, three, cheese. All right. One more time, thank you to Kohler and Equip.